It's such a challenge for families who have been given the diagnosis of CF through a newborn screen. They bring their baby home who, to all intents and purposes, looks perfectly fine, and then they get a call from the doctor that something is terribly wrong. Um, and they hear about the disease and they realize that it's an incredibly um, serious disease uh, from what the doctor's saying and yet they look at their child and see a child that doesn't look like there's a thing the matter. So it's very, very hard to initially wrap your head around that kind of a uh, news. When Aiden um, was uh, about eight days old, um, we had noticed actually that he seemed a little, he was eating constantly and was having frequent stools and we were a little bit concerned and actually called the doctor the morning of September 24th. And they said, oh no, that's fine, that's normal. You know, he's a small baby, they eat, they have frequent bowel movements. And then two hours later, the doctor actually called back and um, asked me, oh, is your husband home? And I said, no. And she said, well, you know, Aiden's, um, I need you to sit down and I need you to be strong. And that's what she said. And she said, Aiden's newborn screening came back positive for cystic fibrosis. The first thing I did when I realized that Nina had CF was I sort of ran up to my office and my computer and Googled it and to try to find out a little bit more about it. I'm at the same time calling and texting Sarah that we needed to talk right away. <laughs> um, and I think I might have said something like, I need a minute of your time. And when I actually talked to Sarah, she's like, I think we need a little bit more than a minute <laughs> to, to talk this over. But also Sarah immediately was really interested and intrigued, um, wanted to find out more. So I went back to the adoption director and told her that, you know, we would seriously consider it if we could just find out more information. Our daughter, Nicole, was born at 6 pounds, 15 ounces, which was significantly smaller than our older daughter. And she was losing her body weight. So I knew that I was a carrier of the CF gene. I actually have had four first cousins with CF. And Joe had been tested for the CF gene, and that was negative. So it was not, um, Joe has a very rare, carries a very rare CF gene. So we knew that she needed to be tested and we had the sweat test and also the genetic blood test and that's how she was diagnosed with CF. And she was diagnosed just under four weeks of after being born. Looking back, I was angry at having been tested negative and mm -hmm. uh, I felt like we had done our due diligence and um, mm -hmm. Turns out it wasn't good enough, so there was a lot of anger at the time. It seemed life-changing, you know? It, it really seemed like, oh, oh my God, what is going to be happening to our little little guy now? And we just really weren't, a I at least wasn't 100% sure. I know uh, Megan knew a little bit more about CF, but I was completely uh, in the dark. So that first time with the CF uh, team and just, of course, the internet had so much on it and uh, we were all over that, so it, it was, you know, uh, shock, anger, uh, all, all the whole gamut of emotions. We started the treatments that day. All his medications started coming in that we needed. They said we need to get, you know, you know pancreatic enzymes. Um, we had to buy applesauce because we <laughs> to, to feed him the enzymes. And uh, his treatment progress started from there. The CF Center was willing to see us within, you know, two hours of the first phone call. And we went there and we sat with the CF team for over two hours with Aiden and Dan and my parents actually. And you know, they were very informative, very gentle with the diagnosis and pretty much told us things would be a little bit different as far as treating him and feeding him and things of that nature. But you know, he would live a great normal life and um, that was our initial contact with CF. Yeah, they were wonderful as far as letting us uh, ask as many questions, and of course we had we had a bunch, so they were they were great. And I think we called them around twice that weekend as well. It was kind of frustrating because we didn't understand a lot. The family wanted to say, "Well, is cystic fibrosis like asthma?" You know, I mean, that was a common question we got from a lot of family members. So trying to explain it was very difficult. And then um, and to read stuff was and, very uh, challenging. Yeah, and it was. You would go onto the internet, and some of, you know, some of the blogs that were out there were just uh, both very encouraging and discouraging at the same time. We educated ourselves first, and we talked to a ton of people. And I, you know, I learned very quickly that, um, you know, you really have to be careful about the research that you do on CF. You have to be careful about the resources that you go to, the resources that you read online, books, whatever it is. One of the biggest questions that almost every family asks, uh, and you can see it in their face before they actually ask it, when you start to explain what kind of treatment needs to be done to keep their child healthy. 
So as we begin to explain about chest physical therapy and enzymes and inhaled treatments, the question becomes, why in the world do I need to do all this? It was so overwhelming. I was so afraid of something happening to her that I just kept thinking, the cystic fibrosis, oh my gosh, cystic fibrosis. And I was, because she's an infant, and when you have an infant, they just rely on you for food and love, and but they don't talk to you, they don't tell you how they're feeling. And that was really overwhelming. And then uh, when a little personality came out, I had this epiphany one day that I was like, this is just a piece of her. She's just this t total, she's just a ham, she's smart, she's funny. And the CF is a big part of her, but I, you can't let it define her. I couldn't let it define her, and that's what the, what I got out of it. One of the challenges for the CF team is to really help parents understand um, that we're not just looking at their child as they are now. We're looking at their child over a lifetime, and hopefully a very long lifetime. Uh, just as CF is not affecting their child in any obvious way at diagnosis, for the most part, with newborn screen, um, we'd like to have that not affect them when they're 30, 40, 50 years old and have them be limited by their lung function. Uh, one of the things I like to tell parents myself is it, it's more than just doing the treatments and getting your kids to cooperate. It's about instilling a value in them, like any other value you have for your family, about what's important in life and what's important that they need to do for their health. You'd be surprised how often the things that you think are going to be negative turn out to actually be positive. So yes, it's, it's a hassle doing physical therapy twice a day or sometimes three times a day mm -hmm. until you realize that if I wasn't doing this, I might have run off to work. I wouldn't be spending this time with, with my daughters. A lot of times there are positives buried inside of what thing, things that appear to be negative at mm -hmm. first. So you know, keep an open mind. Mm -hmm. When we finally made the decision to go forward, our, you know, our families changed immediately. Their sort of worry to support and excitement. Look at what they drop, drop. <laughs> it was really a, a wonderful time. To learn more about this issue, ask your CF Foundation Accredited Care Center or contact the CF Foundation directly. Call 800-FIGHT-CF or email us at info at cff.org.